opened up today is a specialty oil producer, particularly white oils, Gandhar Oil Refinery. The company plans to raise 500 crore rupees Why this IPO out of which 302 crores is a fresh issue and the balance 198 is an offer for sale. The price band has been fixed at 160 to 169 rupees per share. And to talk about the way forward, we're joined by Aslesh Parikh, the joint MD uh, of the company, and he's here with us in the studio now. Uh, Aslesh, morning, and thank you very much for uh, joining in. So we know you're a specialty oil producer, the largest manufacturer of white oils. But can you just explain the business to us a little bit very briefly for the benefit sure. of our viewers? Thank you for uh, having me on the studio. So we are the largest manufacturers of white oil in India and one of the top five players globally. Okay. Now, if you see white oil as a product, is a raw material which is derived out of base oil and it is primarily used in, you know... Uh, the raw material is? Base oil. Base oil. Okay. Which is, yes. Like your Brent. Uh, yeah, I mean, the Brent is a... Derivative Brent of is a crude. Yeah, it is a, a derivative, derivative of, of crude. crude. Yeah. But white oil as a product is used in various applications. So we have the personal care, healthcare industry as one of our major uh, customer base, you know, for the PHPO revenue, which is the personal care, okay. healthcare and the performance oil industry. And white oil as a product is used in, you know, various household applications. So if you, I mean, if you see daily products, you know, like, like a hair oil, like a cream, like an ointment, like a lotion, Got you know, this, the, uh, this is where, you know, the product finds its uh, specific applications. And all your revenues come in from white oil? No. So the, uh, at Gandha, the revenue of our companies are divided into three categories, the personal care, healthcare, and the performance oil division, okay. contributing to around 55% uh, of the total revenue of the company. We have the lubricants, and then we have the process and the insulating oil. But oh. the but bulk of it is white White oil, which All goes into uses these categories <coughs> yes. of personal care, health care, uh, etc., right? Yes. So the bulk of the application is from the PHPO industry, where we have customers Got like it. Unilever, Procter & Gamble, Indian FMCG companies like Marico, Imami, no, Bajaj. No, what, we, what I think Srabhi was trying to ask is that you are predominantly manufacturing white oils, which go into, into these, these three categories, Exactly, right? into this industry. Or is yes. there any other specialty oil that you produce? So this is why, so we have more than 450 products, which we, which is, you know, marketed under our brand name Diviol. Okay. But, you know, white oil, petroleum jellies are the specific products which are primarily used in the uh, personal care and the healthcare industry. Hmm. Now, uh, uh, Aslesh, I want to come to uh, the, the, the financials and we'll put that up for our uh, viewers as well because the financial track record has been very, very robust last couple of years. Uh, so for our viewers' reference, the FI 21 to 23 CAGR, the compounded rate at which revenues have grown, is a very, very robust 40%. If it does, been growing at about 50% uh, and profits at 12%. At the end of FI 23, mm -hmm. on a top line of almost 4,080 crores, you were at an operating margin of 78 Eight percent. Okay. So, give us some idea of margin sensitivity. I mean, uh, how will these numbers vary? Let's say with fluctuation in crude oil prices, because white oil is derived essentially from from crude. crude. What about your raw material risks, major suppliers, and you know these global fluctuations? How can they impact your financials? See, uh, at Gandhar Oil, you know, as I informed you earlier, you know, the focus at Gandhar is specifically on the personal care and the healthcare division, which contributes to 55% of our total revenue. We are, you know, the leading manufacturers of white oil. Apart from that, our revenues, uh, you know, are catered. I mean, our export revenues are substantial. Mm -hmm. So, 40% of our total revenue is generated from overseas sales. So we export to US, Europe, Africa, South America, Australia, and so on. So having said that, if you see uh, the profile of our customers, like the names that we have, like Unilever or Procter & Gamble per se, or the Indian multi uh, FMCG companies, you know, are with us, you know, for long number of years. Having said that, there are a high amount of high, a huge entry barrier in the business. For example, you know, getting amp panel with a custom with a supply with a customer like Unilever or a Procter & Gamble is a time process of minimum four to five years of amp panelment. Mm -hmm. So it's a long term process which is involved. No, no, fairly uh, fair. I completely understand that you have great linkages with some of the marquee customers, Indian and overseas. My question was more about understanding the volatility in in okay. in the numbers in the business so model. If, considering mm -hmm. you're linked at the end of it, you're linked to. Uh, international oil prices, yes. right? So, uh, you know, our key raw material, which is base oil, wherein we have contracts with leading, uh, you know, uh, producers of uh, this specific raw material from Saudi Arabia or South Korea. So we have price pass-through contracts with our customers also. Okay. Now, on the buying side, if you see, the pricing is based on index link pricing. Mm. So, you know, although we have term contracts with the refineries today, but the but the pricing is index link, wherein the pricing is, you know, changed month on month. Okay. Okay. This so, is so, since you have the price pass through, I, I guess that insulates any raw material shock that you may have. Absolutely, yes. But margins, like as I said, FI23, you were at 7.8%. Uh, 
So given the nature of the business, is this range 7 to 8%? Is that sort of peak margin range? Or this, is there any scope see, to see, grow? The industry is at this range. But if you see our, the ROE and the ROC are pretty high amongst the peers. So, okay. you know, we do our allocation of uh, capital uh, at, the, at the best possible way. The working capital is also, you know, tightly controlled to ensure efficient uh, utilization of the resources that we have and efficient uh, uh, utilization of the funds as well. Mm. Uh, can you talk about your export and domestic uh, revenue mix? Yes. So, 40% of the total revenue is our overseas sale, okay. wherein we export uh, to we export across the globe, including the US, the Europe, the Africa, the South America, and so on. And balance 60% is from the domestic sales. And this ratio of 40-60 export to domestic has been steady, or has it been changing? No. So, if you see, change? if you go back to the past, our export revenue, you know, has a, a improved substantially. From FY21, we had an export revenue of 741 crores. Okay. Uh, uh, and FI23, our export revenue was in the range of 2,100 crores for a total revenue of 4,000 odd crores. Okay. So yeah. even as a percentage of overall sales, uh, exports. So exports are growing faster for you yeah, than domestic? Yeah, exports are uh, def definitely growing uh, faster than uh, the domestic. And uh, is there market. a difference in margins between exports and domestic? See, margins, if you see, you know, across uh, the various uh, value chain are more or less similar. But, you know, focus uh, going forward with Gandhar, the, out of the strategy that we want to, you know, uh, uh, the strategy at Gandhar, you know, is to grow within the customer. Uh, expand across geographies and invite new customers, you know, at Gandhar. Okay. Uh, just some small questions about the uh, the use of the proceeds. Mm -hmm. About 22 crores will apparently go towards payment of a loan in one of your subsidiaries. This is something called, I think, Texon. 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 Can you tell us more about this? What kind of a loan is it? Also, just give us a profile of, you know, debt profile overall. And uh, whether this takes care of the entire loan, will you be servicing more loans for Texon? So, Texol is our uh, subsidiary company, you know, which was started in 2019. There is a small term loan which we are planning to repay of around 23 odd crores through proceeds of this issue. However, uh, uh, so, you know, the idea is, you know, to ensure the company is a debt-free company. Although we do have a small working capital debt, but if you see... At the Texon level or the no. Gandhar level debt-free? Uh, put together, there is a working capital debt in Texol as well as Gandhar. Being a capital-intensive business, there is, you know, amount of... Uh, there is a working capital which is required, you know, for the functioning of the company. Okay, but long-term debt will, after you pay this 23 crores will to be Texon, zero. your long-term debt will be zero? Yes. Okay. okay. Uh, got that. Just, uh, you know, final point again on use of proceeds. I think you have some CapEx plans in place uh, as well. The total funds that you're raising would be around uh, 300 crores. That's yes, the fresh absolutely. issue. Yes. So, 22 crores goes towards this repayment of loan. Uh, what, what are the CapEx plans and for the remaining? See, today our utilization uh, in our Indian facility is around 95%. Mm. Uh, having said that, we are doing capacity expansion in our Taloja facility by 100,000 kiloliters, which is expected to complete by end of this year, okay. which we are planning to do it through internal accruals. Apart from that, we are also doing some capacity expansion in our Silvasa facility by around 18,000 kiloliters, which we are you know, funding it through the proceeds of this, of this issue. Mm. Uh, so, once this incremental capacity at the Loja and Silvasa come on stream, uh, you gave us some numbers. I think one is 18,000 kiloliters and the other one is 100,000. 100,000. So, yes. you know, 1 lakh kiloliters. Once you add up the two, what's the incremental revenue you can get by e adding up your capacity by 118,000? Yeah, 000? absolutely. The incremental revenue that we expect, you know, once, you know, the full capacity is utilized will be in the range of 1,000 crores. And this is expected when? Uh, we expect to, you know, uh, uh, bring the utilization in next three to four years. Okay, so there is still, um, you know, some, some time, time till you get to 100% yeah. utilization yes. levels. Yes, so utilization doesn't uh, happen as soon as the capacities are installed. It takes time, you know, to fill up the full capacity. So, okay, oh, I mean, to round it off, to make it very simple for our viewers, as, uh, you know, this CapEx keeps coming on stream and it'll happen in parts, uh, what could be the growth in volumes? I mean, could it be, say, 20% over next year, 25%? Just, just an idea of how the volume profile will keep increasing as more capacity comes on stream. See, apart from the leadership that we have in this category, you know, the massive scale of operations that we done at Akandar and the profile of customers that we have, you know, we would like to definitely uh, grow in the personal care, healthcare uh, sector. And if you see, uh, even the industry as a whole, you know, white oil as a product, you know, I mean, is expected to grow at 10% CAGR in the next five years from FI23 to FI27. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we are at the center of this growth, you know, we are well placed with the profile of customers we, with, we have, with the strategic tie-up tie we, we have with our suppliers, we are expected, you know, to grow at better than the industry. Even historically, you know, we have grown uh, better than the industry. Aslesh, uh, you know, thank you very much for coming uh, here in the studio and chatting with us. We've got more questions, but out of time right now.